So you're interested in using precision farming with seasons. You come to the right spot. I'm going to be putting together a series of videos here explaining what you need to do step by step all the way through. Stick around. Welcome back everybody, Driver53 here, and today we're going to be doing something maybe not a little bit different, but different for me. I'm going to step out of my, outside of my comfort, comfort zone a little bit here, and we're going to be talking about seasons with precision farming. Now I kind of covered this a little bit in one of my previous videos, but we're going to dive a lot deeper into this now. And I've been seeing a lot more conversations on the forums and Facebook and other social media about people wanting to use seasons with precision farming. And I think it's an absolutely great thing. I've already shown that you can get a crazy yield, 145% or higher, depending on your geo. And I just wanted to kind of go through the steps um, just to help ease people into it a little bit more and you know kind of help out and answer some questions along the way that I myself have also about more seasons than precision farming I think I've done a pretty good job of testing all that but how is it going to relate to seasons is it going to be exactly the same or what so first off let's go ahead and get into the menu side of seasons and if you don't know what seasons is it's a mod available on mod hub and it's going to let you run the farm through all the different four different seasons of a year and you're going to have spring summer fall and winter and it, fall can also be interchanged with autumn i just say fall um because the leaves like to fall then um and precision farming you know i've got a lot of other videos you guys can go check those out if you're interested in just how the it works as a basic level um there's a lot of videos out on both of those i feel right now so we're not necessarily going to cover that just more how they work together but i will go ahead and start out and show you right here in the settings and you're going to get to this by holding your um l1 and your options uh buttons so temperature unit, you can switch back and forth here, however you like. Um, I'm gonna run three day seasons, but you can run all the way up to 24 day seasons. And they are in three day increments just to keep everything nice and handy. We'll look at the calendar here in a little bit. Um, I'm gonna run crop moisture on because I think that's a more realistic thing that's gonna you know, play into seasons a little bit more. Um, I don't know if we're gonna have snow or not, but if we do, I wanna see it just cause I wanna have fun with it. Um, crop damage right over here. We're going to leave that at 50 and 20 on the weed intensity scale. These are both um, normal settings, default settings when you come in here. Um, next is going to be the, uh, what else do we need to do? Uh, the calendar. Okay. So um, the other things I'm going to kind of cover as we get into them a little bit more, I'm not going to go over everything right now. So um, this is the calendar. And like I said, three day seasons. So we're going to start in spring and then we're going to go summer, fall, winter so we need to get everything in the ground by day three i think we have plenty of time we're going to run on regular time scale um, you can also run on like a five times scale to kind of help out with this a little bit more um, because some of your days may get really long and your seasons could get really long if you don't um, but totally up to you now the one thing that i will point out on the left hand side you can see the blue numbers and that is the ground temperature that the it needs to be for the seeds to actually germinate. And by germinate, I mean they're gonna actually start forming roots and start to grow. If you get germination failed, then you can't actually have any crops because they're dead. Um, so we'll look at that once we start seeding. Um, yeah, and is there anything else? So let's look at the precision farming menu right here. So we don't have any land sampled. So the first things that we need to do is figure out what field we're actually going to use. And I've decided I'm going to use field 11 down here because if I come over here um, and I select this one, and the way that I'm doing that is I'm pressing um, L3 and then R3. So L3 gives me my option to be able to sell land. 
R3 allows me to see what's in here. So the field info on the soil distribution, I can see that I have all four different types of soil. Now it's not great soil, but it is all four. And I just wanna be able to see what kinda of happens with each soil type. On this map, there's not a really good variety or a whole field that would be this kind of soil. So we're gonna use field 11 down here. And if we come over here, as you can see, we don't have any samples taken yet. So I don't know exactly where the edges of each one of those soil types are. Um, I kind of have a feeling, but I don't know for sure. So that's the first thing I need to do, maybe. Um, you can also save a little bit of time if you want to see if you need to plow. So as we can see here, field 11 needs plowed. Now plowing has absolutely, um, you're not gonna, you don't need your soil samples to be able to plow. Okay, plowing is done separately. So I can actually do both of these tasks at the same time to save time, right? Um, but I do know that if I put an RTK station in, I'm going to be able to plow faster. It actually does save time with the worker. So that's the first thing I'm gonna do is come over here and I'm going to put in an RTK station. Now, I just want one of the basic low cost ones right here. This is all I need. And we also know that you only need one of these on your farm. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put it right over here by these trees, kind of out of the way, because if I decide to do anything with this field a little bit later, then it's out of my way. Um, you know, we could actually hide it here in these trees. What do you guys think about that? Yeah, let's hide it like uh, right here. All right, perfect. So there's my RTK station. It's now gonna let my workers go faster. So I need to come over here and find out where my plow is. And everything that we're going to do here in this is, I'm probably gonna do this a little bit like a Let's Play, um, but maybe not. Um, I might jump around a little bit and show you guys just the important stuff, or we could uh, do the whole thing. Let's find our plow. And these are all base game pieces of equipment here. And I need a plow. So this is Cultivator. I don't actually see that we have a plow. All right, well, let me go grab one of those and we will be right back. Now that we have our plow out in the field, I need to go ahead and get a scout. And the way I'm gonna do that is I'm gonna come over here to miscellaneous and it's gonna be right here. So it's a scout, it's gonna cost 17,000 if you wanna own it, or if you wanna lease it, it's 867 right off the bat. Now, per day and per operating hour, it kinda of depends on how big your fields are. You can see it could, it's not gonna be super expensive. I think the worst part is gonna be the number of samples that you need to take. So we are gonna go ahead and lease this piece of equipment right there, perfect. So let's go over here and we're gonna pick this thing up now. And we're gonna take it over to our field and I'll show you how to uh, start taking some samples. We are in our field and we need to go ahead and unfold this. And as you can see, we have a really nice circle here that we can see exactly where we're at. So I'm gonna start right here and I'm just gonna go ahead and start taking samples. And I hit the wrong button. <laughs> All right, right here, taking samples, awesome. So we're gonna do this around the entire field. Uh, once we're done, we're gonna sample them, but this right here is gonna allow me to um, be, you know, multi multitasking. So I know that I can't do anything else to this field until after I get my samples, and since I need to plow it, that's really the first thing I wanna do anyway. So we're gonna go ahead and get both these knocked out at once, and I will be back whenever we are ready for the next step. So we got all the samples taken. Let's look at the map here really quick. This is what it looks like. So we've got a pretty decent mixture here. There is quite a bit of silty clay as we knew from the um, estimate earlier. Um, I think it's gonna be an okay field. It's gonna be like you would find you know, anywhere else. So not gonna be a problem there. We were able to plow. So right here, we got everything plowed up 
also. And I just want to show you one thing um, with the plowing. And that is over here on this. So as you can see here, this is our weather forecast. All right. Um, our minimum temperature, everything right now is above freezing. But if you're actually in winter time and the ground is actually frozen, you're not going to be able to plow. Um, so also some of the geos, if you use a geo with seasons, you will not be able to uh, plow if it is below 32 degrees Fahrenheit or zero Celsius. So just keep that in mind. You may have to wait a little bit of time or advance time a little bit forward to be able to do that. And we can go into geos a little bit more at the end of everything um, instead of right now. I'm playing base seasons. I'm not running any geo at all. You don't have to run a geo. Um, so that's the way we're doing it. But the next thing we're going to need to do is um, put some lime down. Um, I know that typically you'd want to maybe fertilize before you do that to be able to get the number of uh, fertilizing cycles that you need, but it's not going to be needed. So this is the end of today's episode. Thank you very much for stopping in. If you enjoyed the video or learned anything today, go ahead and give me a thumbs up if you would. If you want to be kept up to date on all my latest precision farming with seasons videos, think about hitting that subscribe button. If you do, hit the notification bell too. Have a great day, everybody. Until next time, this is Driver53, signing off.